What up, everyone? This episode has been brought to you by Jam Hits. Jam Hits is a one-stop shop for all of your multimedia needs. Whether you're an artist in need of some studio time, recording a music video, if you're in need of printing out some artwork for your upcoming album, show, or merch, Jam Hits is the place for you. We also have many different podcasts and radio shows in which you can promote yourself in the confines of our state-of-the-art studio. I guarantee you, once again, Jam Hits is the place for you, so go give them a follow on Instagram. This is for all of my sneaker heads out there. I get all of my sneakers from one place, and that is Inland Empire Sneakers. Are you tired of paying those extra fees on certain websites? Are you tired of missing the beat on the latest drops? Are you tired of your shoe plug being outrageously overpriced? Well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, go give Anlin Empire Sneakers a try. That's my primo, and let them know that Santi sent you. Once again, Anlin Empire Sneakers on Instagram, go give them a DM, go follow them, and for an extra discount, let them know your boy Santi sent you. Welcome to another episode of Santi Section. Today, my guest coming from everywhere. Oh, my, okay. bro- my brother, Mr. Flaming Hot Cheeto. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Brother? Doing good, my dude. Yeah. Flaming Cheetos all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, just here, ready to put it down. Thanks for the opportunity, everyone, all you guys. Yeah, it means a lot to me. And uh, like I said, at the end of the day, I know you guys are helping me put it down for all my autism people out there. Because, I mean, yeah, like, I, you know, I got autism, Asperger's, I take meds for seizures. So, you see any of that holding me back? Uh-uh. No way whatsoever at all. They said I wouldn't drive. I'm driving today. That's right. So, yeah, thanks, brother. And yeah. you guys are good inspirations to me as well. And that's what I try to be. And so, everything you do for me, I'm just trying to pass it down to all my autism people, too, as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, man. It means a lot, you putting out all that day. message, you know. And uh, the reason why, obviously, the reason why we have you here is because we've always... We've seen you around, making your rounds everywhere, brother. And uh, something that really stands out, you right off the bat, you're you're, you're a giving person, right? And I'm nobody, no, yeah, nobody really knows your story, so that's why <laughs> we're here, brother. I mean, first of all, where, where are you from originally? Well, I mean, I was born in uh, Montclair, Ontario. Okay. Uh, that's where most of my family's from. But uh, like when I was uh, born, uh, my dad didn't really want me to live the gang life like he grew up in, so uh, we ended up moving to Speria, Victorville. So pretty much, yeah, I stayed out there until I, like, graduated. And then we moved back to Ontario, Ontario, until uh, our house was getting done being built in Temecula. Mm. So now uh, we're out there, and I've kind of been back and forth, uh, living on my own and back with my parents. Yeah, I was living on my own for a little while, but uh, my uh, roommate didn't really uh, fork up the money like they were supposed to. So now I'm back at my parents uh, saving money. And uh, once again, like I said, I got autism, Asperger's, I take meds yeah. for seizures, but that still don't stop me from doing my best to try to be independent. And like you said, I'm a giving person. Well, that's because I just try to give you what I expect to be given. And I just try to do and be there for the people what I wish I always had or what I wish they would all would have always been for me. So a lot of that, like I said, comes out of my heart because I know how it is to be made fun of. I know how it is to be judged. I mean, yeah, people, I'm not going to lie, people still judge me for being different but last time i checked uh hey the great ones always are that's right uh, that's true and you were i spoke to you briefly uh, a few times and you, i believe you told me that you were diagnosed with well not diagnosed you started mm-hmm. getting seizures at a young age oh right? yeah very yeah. young and from that point on i mean i could imagine as a parent how hard that is because i mean not imagine i know as a parent how hard <laughs> yeah. that is to see your kid deal with that kind of situation because my daughter deals with that <laughs> yeah uh, she had she's only been diagnosed with only but so far uh she, she was diagnosed with childhood epilepsy mm-hmm. so she had they told me she's gonna have it for a couple years uh she doesn't have severe seizures or anything of that nature but um with your story once you had your your first uh seizure mm-hmm. right off the bat did your parents jump on that and like try to get you diagnosed to see what was going on or at what uh, point yeah like uh, uh first i had one when i was four at first they were like mm, what is this so they took me to a basic doctor pretty much uh nothing really worked so they started advancing to more doctors more doctors more doctors and then pretty much nothing was really working. So they kept seeing and asking, well, we got, want to see a specialist. You said this, this, it was supposed to work in three months. It still hasn't. Do we got to get another doctor? Okay, then put them on something else. So uh, my parents stayed very dedicated to keep pushing, pushing. Man, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, uh, 
yeah, that's a good thing about my parents. Like uh, some parents just like leave them on their meds hoping one day, but nah, when it comes to disabilities and your children and stuff, you really gotta keep pushing, 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 and uh, pretty much uh, do for them what you wish your parents would always do for you. And uh, yeah, then at the age of 12, finally I saw a real good specialist. At the age of 12, they all went away. And then, uh, yeah, uh, plus two, I started doing like kickboxing and martial arts. And then at the age of 16, I mean, I did a couple of smokers with headgear. And then at the age of 18, I wanted to go further and fight without headgear. But uh, my doctor said I got to be off my meds. So, okay, since I haven't had any for such a long time, uh, I got off my meds. And uh, sure enough, I had a seizure. So then uh, my doctor said I got to wait three more years. So that goal kind of got killed. And uh, I grew up, too, playing a lot of baseball. Like, I do Special Olympics as well. And uh, that goal kind of got killed because uh, uh, I guess I was a liability or something, like when I dive or slide, so I couldn't uh, play college ball. But like I said, a lot of things try putting me down. A lot of things try killing me, and I'm still pushing forward yeah. right now. Like I do acting and I do other stuff. I keep trying to find new goals. I don't let none of that hold me back. Like I told you before, we all go through battles, but every battle just teaches you how to win a war. God gives his hardest battles to his strongest warriors, and every day I'm just getting stronger and stronger. So like even you guys, whether you have disabilities or not, if you're having a like a hard time in life, if you're having a hard time in this world, hey, all that is is going to make you stronger. And like you said, too, how uh, your girl has seizures, this, this. Don't give up faith. And that goes for everyone. Because remember, a slow process is better than no process. And I tell everyone, hey, you know how you say you win some, you lose some? Nope, I don't believe in the word lose. I believe in the word learn. Because every day you win some, you learn some. And like I said, from autism people every day, I'm just learning how to be a strong warrior all day, every day, baby. Booyah. Yeah. Yeah. You got to look at your lessons as a blessing one way yeah. or another, correct? Mm hmm Yeah. So uh, at, at what age uh, were you diagnosed with autism? Uh, Well... At first, like uh, everyone always like kind of expected that I had autism when I was little. It's just that uh, my uh, mom and dad kind of wanted to like put it off a little because bad enough, I already took meds for seizures. And at the age of 16, like people started really saying, look, he's diagnosed, he's a little uh, different from most, this, this, that. Like, uh, so, but at first they just kept putting it off thinking it was like a high school phase or something. Mm. But as I got older, I mean, my counselors and told me to see a doctor. So then they pretty much just said he has Asperger's. Yeah, he has autism. And uh, so I guess that's another thing I add to the list. But the way I look at it, hey, there's people out there that only have one arm, yeah. one leg. And I see them doing a lot with their life. So no matter what hits you, if anything, that just motivates me to go stronger yeah. all day, every day. And, and for those of us that don't know, what what's Asperger's? Asperger's is like a, another form of autism as well and uh, pretty much it's more sometimes like a high functional thing and uh, the thing with like Asperger's and autism like uh, usually either we learn the hard way or we learn through seeing ourselves through other people mm. and that's a cool thing about doing special olympics because i get to see everyone's disabilities and that trains my mind i'm like oh okay so that's how i look when i have a seizure that's how i look when i was acting out because of my autism okay so now it's uh, building my brain up i'm learning a lot mm. so one thing about us because you could tell us stuff uh, millions of times and a lot of times it's just going to go in one year out the other and that's the thing that sucks about autism because a lot of times we do before we think Mm. A lot of times we just want to go and grab for action before we think of the consequence a lot of times. So uh, that's the thing with autism. But like I said, I've learned a lot from my mistakes. I've learned a lot from others. I mean, it had to be the hard way. But at the end of the day, I keep pushing forward. Yeah, bro, that, that, that's phenomenal. A phenomenal breakdown that you mm -hmm. just gave of everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it does definitely uh, sheds light on a lot of things for those of us that victimize ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because yes. I, I'm one of those. I'm not going to lie to you. When, when my daughter was going through her thing, I was like victimizing myself like crazy, asking why, why is this happening? What am I going to do? You know what I mean? Like I say, a slow process yeah. is better than no process. Absolutely. So that, that's very inspirational, everything you said. Thank and, you. And more so, even for like those of us that feel mm -hmm. like we've had a, a physical mishap. You know what I mean? I've had a ton mm -hmm. of physical mishaps through going to the gym or anything like that like i love basketball but mm -hmm. physical mishaps have stopped me from 
diving into or partaking in that right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So everything you just shared with, it's like, man, it, it's so inspirational too, where there's more to the world than just this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And which takes me to my next line of questions. I, I've mm-hmm. noticed you, you love dancing. You, you're amazing <laughs> yeah. at what you do, bro. I try. I just have dancing. fun. <laughs> so where does all that come from? I mean, how, how did, is, is that like one of your loves now? Like one of your uh, hobbies? Is it dancing? Mm-hmm. Well, ever since I was young, I mean, yeah, yeah I've always liked dancing and stuff. And uh, like I said, me, uh, people always call me the outcast. So I'm like, OK, you want to call me outcast and I'll give you a reason to. So like uh, I do a pole fitness. Uh, I do a bunch of other different styles of dancing. Mm-hmm. One time I took bully dancing uh, <laughs> just to like, uh, yeah, you know, that one song. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. Yeah. Hey, pretty much. Yeah, I'm part of that song. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I love dancing, and, oh, on Wednesdays, <laughs> I even just started taking this one uh, R&B class. Oh, damn. And, uh, yeah, so even if you guys, if you know any other kind of dance classes or whatever, different styles, hey, I'm all for it and have that's, fun. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And uh, what's your favorite uh, music to dance to? Uh, like, yeah, hip-hop, uh, sometimes maybe a little slow R and B here and there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. and uh, but yeah, a lot of hip hop, pretty much. Hey, anything I can shake my hips to. I mean, <laughs> even oldies, I mean, like even too, like I like dancing like to slow oldie songs, like uh, from uh, uh, my carnal brother Ozzy. He sings yeah. a lot of oldies. Yeah, you know who he is. Yeah, yeah, Ozzy. Yeah, he's like a brother to me. Oh, okay. yeah. So he sings a lot of oldies. So I like sing, uh, dancing to his songs and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, I was just in one of his videos. So yeah, I he's a that. blessing and stuff. And yeah, other good inspirationals and motivators like a uh, Sapo. Yeah, yeah, he's like a big brother to me. Like his music when he raps and stuff, you see me dance to it. Yeah, that's right. And uh, my brother Pirate, he's a big motivation. Always saying, Juno, get out there. Yeah, get out there, show your stuff. I'm like, okay. And then um, Uncle Fluff, I see him dancing and doing his <laughs> little crib walking. So that motivates me to be out there, too. Yeah. So all you guys, like I said, you guys are all inspirations to me. So what you guys do and give to me, I'm just trying to do and give back to all my autism people as well. That's why I consider you guys all family, no matter what. Like they say, uh, uh, yeah, uh, blood just makes you related. Loyalty is what makes you family. So when I look at you guys, you guys are family related. Because like I said, um, blood, yeah, that just makes you related. But to me, you guys, I see your loyalty. I try to give you my loyalty, and that's what family is really all about. Thanks, man. And, and and right back at you. And with that being said, I mean, it, yeah. it's a trip, right? How you find family within these movements, correct? Uh-huh. Like automatically. Like I yeah. met you, bro, and I'm like, oh, this, oh my boy's family. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, all it's a trip. And it, and it can go, it can go unsaid. It's like we all know that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and with with family, I mean, it sounds like obviously you you have built a community based off of like everything you've gone through and all of that, and and you are definitely a very uh, a person that people attach to a lot, you know, easily, you oh, know. Cause I, I, I try. <laughs> and so, how long have you been hitting shows and all that? Where you're like, okay, it, it's it, and correct me if I'm wrong. It looks like it's like one of your escapes to like hit shows and mm-hmm. and and have fun and just escape for a minute. Well, when I was young, like I said, I've always been the outcast, always like the energetic one, always this, this, that. So then at first, like, yeah, I used to get made fun of, but I'm like, you know what? Let me use it to my advantage because, like, I love doing acting and stuff. And uh, like I tell other people, when you go for an audition, they're always looking for that one thing that uh, you have that the other ones don't because everyone could read the same script. But what's going to stand out about that person that doesn't about the rest? So when it comes to this world for all my autism people, yeah, anyone could say, oh, this, this does that for you. But I want to be able to stand out and show my autism people no matter how weird you are, no matter how crazy you dance, no matter how crazy you dress. Hey, don't be afraid to be out there. Do you in the real world, no matter what people say. So uh, my autism people are a big yeah. motivation for me to uh, do that for and stuff. So that's what just gives me that drive along with you guys, because I learned from you guys as well. Like uh, this podcast, you guys got goals, you guys are doing things. And I'm like, you know what? I want to do something. What's my cup of tea? So like I try to think, okay, what can I use to my advantage that I could do? Like I see you guys DJing. I'm not that good. You guys podcast. I mean, uh, I don't know how to podcast, but if I know how to dance, then you know, I'm going to have yeah. fun. Use that to my advantage. If I know how to put it for, down for my autism people, that's one of my goals. And like I said, I love doing acting. And as a matter of fact, acting actually helped me a lot with my autism. Because oh. at first, like, yeah, I was a little shy. I didn't know how to act. Uh, but like the, when they put you on stage, you know how you get out of that yeah. Philly shell. 
or like uh, one time too, like in an interview. Uh, yeah, us autism people get nervous, but doing acting, like uh, they said, uh, okay, pretend you're the one giving the interview. Mm. Okay, now pretend you're in an interview. So if you were the interviewer, what questions were you? would you say? Okay, act it out. So guess what? Now when I'm in the real world, very much more or less, I know how to do all because of acting. Yeah. You do, and just to uh, rewind a little bit, you do know how to podcast, bro. You're doing an amazing job right now. <laughs> oh, like I said, <laughs> I learned from you guys. Yeah, no, and and so you, of course, all those move. You started get, diving into all of that. When was the character Mister Flaming Hot Cheeto <laughs> born? When did that come about? Mm. Nah, let's see. Uh, well, I mean, uh, everyone always said I've been a either a crazy swag. Uh, a dresser or whatever and then uh, like i said i'm always like uh, standing out so then i started doing uber eats and then uh, i bought a flaming hot cheeto uh, outfit because you know uh, uber eats you know yeah and i know a lot of people like flaming cheetos so then i started doing this where every uber eat order i'll, I'll leave a bag of flaming cheetos and i was at one lowrider show it was an autism show that uh my uncle fluffy ended up doing and uh yeah, so I met the guy, Richard Montanez, the inventor of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Come and find out, my dad used to work at Frito-Lay, so he knew my family, uh, my older cousins or comadres with his wife, Judy. So it's like there was a big connection. I'm like, okay, this is a signal from God. And uh, so I just felt like this is a good connection, a good inspiration. You know, I want to keep driving forward with this. And uh, I see a lot of uh, people and autism people. Like, I know there's a lot of goals they have in life, but sometimes they're afraid to go and shoot for it. So, I mean, these are goals I want in my life, and I'm going to show them. Don't be afraid and shoot forward for your goals. And pretty much, pretty much, yeah, that's how I got into it. And, uh, yeah, eventually, who knows, maybe one day I'll be sponsored. But regardless whether I do or not, uh, my main goal is just to put it down for all my autism people. And, and for the audience, you guys heard it, maybe one <laughs> day he'll be sponsored. So if, if Frito-Lay is listening to this get our boy day, sponsored day. so that means bro that everything you're sporting everything you're rocking backpack the, mm -hmm. the gifts you brought us the jewelry the hat everything it's coming out of your own pocket mm, yeah it is uh-huh i mean there's some people too that like uh, uh help me and stuff like uh, you guys and like this chain came from a queen of accessories yeah she's really nice too and uh, mm. just other people too like they try to do handouts and give me too as well of what they can but uh 90 of the time yeah all this comes out yeah. of my pocket ha has frito-lay caught have you caught their eye yet have you uh, and mm. has anyone from frito-lay reached out to you like hey bro check it out like we we like what you're doing or do they know of you yet uh nah i mean uh big uh brother that's gonna be a helper too you know mm. Yeah, of course you heard of uh, jam hits right mm -hmm. yeah mike yeah he said he'll help me a lot too yeah. and he's like family too so um booyah all day for yeah, him yeah yeah of course bro we're here to help and, and the reason why yeah, i asked you too so as well yeah so, so the audience could know so they could have that awareness you know what i mean of the, the boy here you know he takes donations to you know help mm -hmm. contribute to the cause of everything that he supports and it's and you're a vital person right now in that movement in that community which is amazing bro and, and mm -hmm. i appreciate that about you so you're not sponsored and uh at what point did you start thinking like so it started with Uber Eats. Obviously, your merch is coming out of pocket. And at what point were you like, you know, what, I'm, I'm going to push it harder? You know, like, what's your end goal? Uh, pretty much like everyone started saying, hey, you should get sponsored. You should this. You should that. You should this. And then I'm like, uh, you know what? One day, uh, just for fun. Yeah, I'm crazy enough. I'll wear my Flaming Cheeto outfit. And then uh, I saw a lot of people at that autism show, autismers, disability people. Yeah. You know, someone just walking around but when they saw me whoa look at the cheeto guy let's go take a picture with him so i'm like dang so i felt like i inspire them a lot and i always wanted to do something to inspire my people and then when i noticed that i inspire them a lot i felt like this was my cup of tea mm. so i said okay cool okay i could start helping my autism people more now and start motivating people and making people happy and stuff like uh i think at one lowrider show too there were these uh two guys arguing or something and then i kind of went over there and i threw bags of flaming cheetos but like, hey want one want one and believe it or not that kind of like lowered down the, that's right uh you're the yeah, intensity and stuff <laughs> yeah so that felt good too 
And uh, like I always say, like you guys, my family, whoever is family for me, I'm family for you 100%. Like I told you before, I mean, hey, I'm always yeah. there to take a bullet for you guys because uh, I'm just trying to do for you what I would like uh, want you to do for me and stuff. And uh, my heart always goes out for you guys uh, regardless. And for uh, all my other autism people out there, all my Flaming Cheeto fans out there, hey, I mean, even if you guys don't like me, hey, that's cool. I mean, I'll still show love to all you guys uh, regardless because, uh, like I said, I mean, yeah, uh, people judge me, but at the end of the day, uh, they could judge all you, they could judge all they want because the way I look at it, as long as you got pure intentions, uh, you don't lose them, they lose you. That's right. And did you always have this mindset or like as a kid or once you started dealing with more health complications, like how, what got you to this, to, to think this way? What got you to have this attitude of gratitude uh going through a lot of things and then seeing a bunch of uh, youngsters and other people going through what i went through and uh it's kind of like one of those things where uh you know how like you always want to like uh uh be uh sometimes like you know how your parents want you to be better than what they were so when i see all these other autism people getting made fun of going through a bunch of stuff instead of them going through suicide or this is like i used to i want them to be do and be better than what i was and stuff so that's why i just try like when i was young like i said i never had that much motivation i never had anyone to look up yeah. to so believe it or not yeah i used to take medication when i was young for suicide stuff and all that i would cut myself that's how lonely i was so when i see other autism people and other i just think man they're probably going to go through that same thing so what did i wish i always had yeah a good leader uh, someone who i could follow that's good so uh as i like uh, graduated college and stuff well i used to go to college but then i kind of dropped out because of my uh, learning disability and stuff and uh they said i took too many uh uh what you call it, just like the fun classes mm, like baseball electives. sports yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but what really got me in this mindset was just seeing all my other people struggle. Yeah. Now, the minute I started seeing my other people struggle, I'm like, oh, man, what can I do for them? What can I do for them? You get what I mean? So you just brought up something that was very, very important and crucial. So for the audience that's listening to whether they're going through autism or some mental health issues, mm -hmm. what's the best resources that you can recommend them that they could take advantage of that's out there right now? Because I would assume when we were younger, we didn't have access to mm -hmm. resources. Now, a good thing we have podcasting to where we could just spread the word. Mm -hmm. Well, first, like I said, a slow process is better than no process. Mm -hmm. And I love all you parents out there. But sometimes, too, like uh, all you parents out there, even mine as well, like a lot of times they try to like uh, shout me in the house, keep me mm -hmm. so shout in forever, not letting me see the real world. And uh, pretty much uh, that doesn't do good for like a lot of us, because when we're like 60 years old, mentally we're still going to be like 13 in the mentality mm -hmm. level so a lot of times uh autism parents you got to learn to let go uh learn to keep pushing your kids regardless no matter how much they get mad at you like i said i'll say it again over and over a slow process is better than no process yeah i mean i go to uh, clubs i go to bars i this is guess what i don't drink i don't smoke to this day i never been drunk once in my life when I go, I have fun, I dance, I this, and people first thing they say, oh, bars, oh, clubs, nah, uh, autism people don't belong in those, they don't know how to act in those. Hey, it took me a slow time, but eventually I grew up, now I know how, now I know the ropes, I look up to you guys and everything else. So again, if I could do it, so could all my other autism people out there. But autism parents, you gotta learn to slowly <laughs> let your kids go i know it's not easy i know you're like oh but they won't learn ah remember a slow process is better than no process yeah. so i know in your heart you're scared for your children but hey think about their future yeah. think about when they don't have you think about when you guys are gone then who's going to take care of them then who's going to teach them and show them the ropes so uh, do for them now before it's too late you get what I mean? Yeah, that's very unique and fascinating the way you just broke it down. I mean, there's more. It's like every almost everything and anything could be a resource. Just because you have a bar that's going to give you clarity or a, or a club or anything like that, it's not just for drinking. It's not just for smoking. It, uh, and it's an environment in which you get to <laughs> feed your mental health, you know? Yeah. yeah that, that makes a lot of sense, bro. I appreciate that. I appreciate that breakdown that you gave. <laughs> How vital is your nutrition with everything that you go through? 
uh, my nutrition, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, my nutrition, everything is good. But uh, I mean, like, like how, what type of diet do you have to follow or if there is anything or, or uh, is anything in specific that you have to stay away from that you, mm, let's see, uh, so far, uh, man, I've never been allergic to anything. And, uh, so, I mean, like I said, I, uh, grilled cake boxing, so yeah. I always try to eat healthy. You're an athlete. And uh, when I was young, I would always have acne on my face mm-hmm. a lot more and stuff. So I would try to stay away from greasy stuff and all that. So uh, pretty much, I mean, uh, yeah, whatever you're trying to do in life, if you want to be an athlete, if you want to this, this, that. But also, too, sometimes I know like autism and disability people, they feel like they got nothing to strive for in their life. So they just want to sit on the couch, eat all day. So that's another thing, parents. Uh, sometimes when you don't uh, let your uh, children get out there and motivate them, all they want to do is sit down, play video games at mm-hmm. the house, uh, eat, pretty much uh, just uh, get all, uh, know what I mean, yeah. all bloated and stuff. And a lot of that is because you don't motivate or get your kids uh, out there. You want your kids to eat healthy. Well, pretty much uh, give them a reason to eat healthy because if you're only making them uh, stay home, then how are they really supposed to eat healthy? You get what I mean? Yeah. No, that's true. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like that with my daughter. Like, I'm very, I try not to be very controlling. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I yeah. try to give that balance of like, look, check it out. This is not gonna be good for you. You could have it once in a while. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's not gonna be good for you because it can, it, it's whatever we consume definitely affects our mental state and <laughs> physical yeah. state. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's why I asked you that because that's I've why heard- Special Olympics was always a blessing to me mm-hmm. too. Because uh, Special Olympics, that's for, like, uh, autism and disability people and all that. So even, too, like, if you sign up your daughter for Special Olympics, she'll see other people, like, run mm. faster than her. Whoa, I want to run fast like that. Yeah. So then, okay, hey, work on your health diet, and you'll be able to uh, play soccer more better. Uh, if you want uh, more uh, strength in your arms and you want to do bowling, or if you want to get faster doing swimming, yeah, all those are in Special Olympics. Mm. So th- those are good motivations, too, to fix your diet. Cause you're always gonna see someone out there faster, whatever, and then that's gonna motivate you to want to be as fast as them. Ah, well, guess what? Mommy and daddy were right when they told you about your mm-hmm. diet and what you should be eating. What, what, uh, and with that being said, what, what sports do you currently uh, partake in when you go to Special Olympics? Uh, mainly uh, uh, baseball. Yeah. yeah softball. Uh, I played men's softball, men's leagues. Uh, I used to play for Riverside. I was one of the captains Mm. because I've been playing since I was like four years old and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, that's always uh, been my forte. And uh, other than that, I mean, uh, dancing and kickboxing. And uh, matter of fact, too, a big brother pirate out there from No Fronts. Yeah, he wants to start uh, teaching me how to uh, box because he used to be a boxer growing up. Mm. So he wants to give me a couple of boxing lessons, too, and stuff because he wants to help, too. And like for people that have autism and give to the community and stuff so uh yeah uh so he's a good person too to for me yeah. that i look up to and a good motivator so uh, yeah i'm gonna start going to the boxing gym with him like on tuesdays and thursdays and stuff yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's amazing bro you're you're a multifaceted individual <laughs> you're be there's there's a lot more than meets the eye than just mr flaming hot cheeto you know what <laughs> i mean i try you're an athlete a dancer a motivational speaker, you can uh, a huge <laughs> contributor to the, the community, uh, <laughs> and you're a very good friend to everybody that's around you, brother. That's thank you. amazing. And so are amazing. you guys. No, thank you, man. I, I, it's it's a blessing having you here. To close it out, bro, I want to ask you what's the best piece. I mean, you've given us a ton of pieces of advice, <laughs> but what's the best piece of advice that you could give someone right now? I could give someone right now, pretty much. Uh, like I said before, God gives His hardest battles to His strongest warriors. And remember, every battle you go through, uh, pretty much, is just teaching you how to win a war. Um, don't believe in the word lose. Believe in the word learn. You win some, you learn some. Because uh, every day, you're just learning how to be stronger. You're learning from your mistakes. You're learning how to be wise. You're learning from your wrong and rights. So, like I said, don't believe in the word lose. Believe in the word learn. And if you're having a hard time right now, hey, that just means uh, God's training you to be stronger. Because nothing's easy. I mean, hey, when you go to the gym, you're going to get torn muscles. But at the end of the day, you're going to be you're going to come out 10 times more stronger. So it's just like in life. Yeah, you're going to get torn muscles. But it's just like being at the gym, you're going to come out 10 times more stronger. So booyah all day, baby. That's and like right. I said, flaming Cheetos. That's right. Just uh, a an L is not an L. It's, an L is not a loss. It's a, a learning lesson, right? All that, day. There it is. Yeah. 
And before we close that out as well, what I want to ask you, how can people contribute to your cause? How can they get a hold of you? What is it that we can do to support your movement? By because well, I know you a, give these away and these come out of your pocket, bro. So yeah, well. I mean, if you guys want to contribute, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, your friendship, your love is already like a good contribution uh, to me. But if you guys do want to like contribute, pretty much, uh, <laughs> yeah, like a Sam's Club. I know they f- uh, do uh, fifty. Uh, there's a box of 50 Flaming Cheetos, mm. and then I'm always going to Winco, getting like the 42 pack of all Flaming Cheetos and stuff. And uh, so, uh, help me uh, do for you. You get what I mean? So, if you guys could contribute more Flaming Cheetos, more ideas. And uh, I heard one thing about like for uh, Frito Lay uh, to be on, sometimes they need letterheads and stuff. And uh, like I said, uh, pretty much uh, do for me so I could do more for you and if you could donate a lot of flaming Cheetos like hey they're not just for me they're also so I could do for you yeah you guys get hey. what I mean but yeah. other than that just do what's on your heart and what you feel and if people want to contribute uh, by a way by way of uh, paying you or sending you cash over <laughs> where where can they DM you to get more information what's your uh, your Instagram tag okay uh, mister then space flaming space hot space and then Cheeto so pretty much a uh, mister uh, flaming hot cheeto and yeah you'll see me in my flaming cheeto outfit and stuff and like i said at the end of the day i mean hey i only ask for your friendship your love your kindness because uh, i mean that's what i'm always gonna give you guys you know what i mean and you know what we're gonna do brother in case by by the time this episode releases what we'll do when we release the episode on <laughs> instagram we're gonna tag frito lay every time that's <laughs> what we're gonna do thank you yeah we're gonna tag them and in the comments for those of you watching in the comments that are watching this episode, go to the Instagram post, uh, the latest Instagram post, any Instagram post that involves Mr. Flaming Hot Cheeto and tag at Frito Lay. So that way we can get this boy what he what we want him to get. We want him to <laughs> for you guys. Be, yep, for nah, everybody. Not just not for already, me or whatever, yeah. but for you guys and all my autism people. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's who I do this for. So that's what we're gonna do. But we appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate and, you guys. And, you know, and everyone else yeah. out there. All right. God bless you, my brother. And uh, we'll thanks, definitely brother. stay in touch. All right. All Thank day. you. All right. Booyah. Flaming Cheetos. Catch you, everybody. Catch everyone next time.